Hello everybody, Andrea Tarowski here with Dental L Tutoring. In this video, I want to talk to you guys about kids and kids in the dental office, okay? We all know those people who are just naturally good with kids and those that aren't. Um, there is nothing to be ashamed of if you're not, but in the dental office, you will likely be seeing kids, especially if, if you work in a pedo practice. Um, you'll be seeing kids all day, every day, right? So it's kind of nice to have an idea of how you should act around them, especially if you're new at dental assisting or dental hygiene. It's just, it's good to kind of have an idea of what other dental professionals are doing, what works and what doesn't work. And I've been in the dental profession now for 13 years. Um, so I kind of have some tips for you. Now, let me be honest. And let me be the first one to say that I would prefer to see an older patient, um, a young adult. I would even prefer to see older adults, seniors, over kids any day. Only because kids to me are exhausting, not in general, but when I see them in the dental office, I'm just kind of exhausted after their appointment because I feel whether it's right or not you have to act a certain way you have to be happy you have to be excited you have to be yay um, I'm normally like that anyway yes but I kick it up a notch when I see kids because what I feel you have to do is you do have to be happy you have to be excited and that's exhausting, especially if you're not normally like that. I am normally like that, but again, I kick it up a notch. So a good example is when you're talking to them, get to their level, especially if they're, if they're not sitting in the chair yet. So if they're down here and you're talking to them like this, they might get a little bit nervous, right? So talk to them at their level. If it means you have to get on your hands and knees, if it means you, you have to sort of slouch a little bit and say, hey, you know, but get to their level, that's extremely important, and talk their language, you know. Um, don't be saying to them, your 3-6 MOD has a cavity, you need to start to brush and floss, you know. They'll be like, what? You know, get to their level and say things like, um, you, um, I'm just trying to think of, I saw a patient the other day, I'm just trying to think of how old he was, but he quite liked how I was explaining um, the cavity process to him. He was, I think he was eight, so he was an older child, but he kind of acted like he was a lot younger than he was. Um, his name was Mike. So I said to him, because he was upset, because he did have three or four cavities, and Mike was very upset about those cavities. But I didn't want him to be upset, right, because he's a kid. So I kind of said to him, Mike, okay, honey, let me explain something to you, okay? So you have sugar bugs in your teeth. Do you know how they got there? And then he would say, no, you know, and I would say to him, well, that's why it's so important to brush and floss every single day. Brush twice a day, once in the morning and once at night, and you are eight years old now, so you should floss every single day, because after today, your teeth are nice and smooth and shiny, right? And then I would show him, and then he would go, yeah, you know, and I'd say to him, well, now they're nice and smooth and shiny. So to keep them smooth and shiny, make sure to brush every morning and every night and floss every single day. And that would be awesome, you know. So you see how I'm more excited than I normally would be. But he was upset because the dentist told him he had three, I believe it was three cavities. So I said to him, I said, if you brush and floss from now on, you won't get any more cavities. So this happened because the sugar bugs were inside the mouth for too long. But if you brush, so you notice how I say it often, like I sound like a broken record, but I say it often, if you brush, every morning and every single night, that actually takes away the sugar bugs. How awesome is that? And then you don't have them. So if you brush in the morning, it takes away the sugar bugs all day until you have something to eat. But then after you eat, have a nice cup of um, water, and that actually helps to take away the sugar bugs even more. And then at nighttime, before you go to sleep, 
you have to brush your teeth again, and then that takes away the sugar bugs. That way you don't have them in the mouth all night. But since you haven't been doing that, that's why those sugar bugs had caused the cavities. So from now on, that won't happen. And then, you know, I do ask them often if they have questions and they usually say no, but you know, be easy on them. You know, don't yell at them if they're not brushing and flossing. I've seen some hygienists and assistants that yell at other parents' children, which I don't agree with, for not brushing and flossing. I mean, yelling may not be the right word, but they will say to them, Honey, you need to brush, obviously. Like, I mean, come on, look at all of the plaque here. I would never talk to a child like that. I don't have kids, so maybe I'm just being too sensitive here, but I also don't agree with yelling at other people's children. So I don't feel like that's the right way to go. In fact, I can tell you it's not, because then I, I, then I have those parents with their kids see me at another appointment time and say, Oh, wow, you are so nice. The last one yelled at us, and my kid didn't want to come back. So can you imagine? Not nice, right? But in the actual appointment, what I like to do, I mean, depending on the age, and especially if the patient hasn't seen you before, I show them everything, okay? Because often kids are afraid of the sharp instruments. They are. So what I will show them first, I'll say, I, I, um, I wish I actually had them here, but I, I do not. But I will say to them, I'll say, this is my tooth mirror. This, I look at all of those nice teeth in there. So let me see, you know, and then they'll go, ah, usually. And then I go, wow, look at all those nice teeth in there. Now, should I make the teeth even more shiny? and then they will say yes, hopefully. Then you take out your polisher, and I say, and this is my cool toothbrush, and as soon as I turn it on, woo, it likes to spin, you know, they love that. And some of the kids, you know, they look at the toothbrush and say, what the, like, what is that, you know? So then I say, look, it's nice and soft. They may touch it, you know, say, see, isn't that nice and soft? And then they go, yeah, okay. And, and then I say, well, should I polish the teeth on the top first or on the bottom first? They always say the top, by the way. So then you polish the top teeth first. Um, you know, polish however they want you to. Um, and if you have the option in your office, say, and for my special toothpaste to make them really, really shiny, do you want orange or raspberry? Don't offer them eight different kinds. Offer them two, okay? Don't offer them, do you want orange, raspberry, strawberry, cherry, mint, or vanilla? They'll be like, what? What did you say? What was the first one, you know? So just offer them two. Do you want orange or, or raspberry, you know, and they will pick one and then go, hmm, this one smells awesome or, you know, something. Um, and then what else? I do show them my air water syringe also because often if I don't show them that and I pick it up, some kids are kind of like, what are you doing? Like, what are you doing? So let them know. Say, and then after I polish, I use this and this helps to, to uh, spray out lots of water and they love that. And then my saliva ejector, I will take that out and say, and this is my cool straw. Um, some hygienists call it a Mr. Slurpee, you know, use whatever you like. Um, say, this is Mr. Slurpee, and then this will help to suck up all the water. So they love that. Um, now, if your patient has tartar, so even if it's a, if it's a four-year-old, it could happen, you need to pick up your instruments but they will want to see it. So usually what I do is I pick up the probe and say, and then I will be using this, see how you know easy this is, and I will make the teeth even shinier because sometimes my toothpaste misses a couple spots. So I just check through all of the teeth, make it nice and shiny. So then of course I will pick up something a lot sharper and then use that. And that's usually okay. But keep in mind though that kids tend to get tired quickly. So don't just take your time with it. Like I'm not a quick worker, so I have to kind of remind myself to like hurry up, um, especially if there's tartar because kids 
don't like you using those sharp instruments, but just try to keep it and make it as fun as possible, you know? Say like, yay, this is so much fun. We are almost done, you know? So just try to be fun. Um, try to be excited and kids love that. Um, and for the fluoride, okay. So this is often one where kids don't like, but I will say to them, okay, the last, last step, and then you can pick a toy is to make the teeth really, really shiny and strong, okay? So for, uh, uh, what do I say? Sometimes I say um, for uh, the vitamins that go on the teeth, do you want strawberry or mint, you know? And then they will pick one. And you either use it as a paint-on, um, a fluoride varnish, it depends on your office. And then I just sort of say like, yay, this is so much fun, you know? And, and then I say, but to make the teeth really, really shiny, don't eat or drink for a whole half an hour. And then that, and then that will make the teeth so shiny for such a long time, you know? Uh, see you guys, I'm starting to lose my voice already. I, I just have some, uh, I think that's ginger ale, so let me just have some of that. Hmm. There we go, but you see, like even me doing the video, explaining this to you guys, I am exhausted, seriously. So, but there is a knack though to working with kids. Um, now, if your um, child patient is misbehaving, you have to be firm. I find this works a lot better than being like nice, nice, nice to them the whole time. You do have to be firm but only take it so far. Like if your patient's like, no, I'm not doing anything, you know, say, well, are you sure? Cause I am here to make the tea so nice and shiny. No. Then I would say, okay, well then uh, we'll just have to do it some other time then. And then they might go, oh, or, hmm. So then I'll say, um, if you let me polish your nice teeth, you can pick a toy, but only if you let me polish. So it's up to you. And then they usually say, oh, okay. You know, even if they have sort of a bad attitude, go, okay, fine, you know, and then polish, hopefully, and then give them a toy, as you had said. But if the patient's just not behaving at all, you know, don't try to uh, to do something on them because in my opinion that's not helping them and it's showing them that even if they misbehave they will get their teeth polished so to me that's not that doesn't make sense so what I do is if they're just absolutely not behaving then I'll say to them like okay well your mom came all the way here for you to have your teeth clean but I'll just have to tell her that you it's just not happening so you will uh, you will not be getting a toy today. We will not be able to polish. Um, that's it. So hopefully we can do it the next time. But if you let me polish, you can have a toy. You know, how about that? And then, you know, see, see how things work from there. So it depends on the child, depends on the office too, because some offices will say to you, well, if, if the child came, no matter what, you have to do something. You know, I could never work in an office like that because I just don't believe in that. But um, so it's up to you. It's up to the patient. It's up to the parents. But that's just kind of what I do if the child is just not behaving. I say, okay, well, then we'll have to do it next time. Sorry. Um, now, x-rays is a tricky thing. If the child just simply can't tolerate it, then then you know, there's nothing you can do and you just have to try the next time, but always try to use a nice small film. Don't try to, uh, to use a size two film in somebody who's six. It's not going to work. So I say for children, let's say ages two to, depending on the child, four, five, six, I would use a size zero or a size one. Six to age 12, I would use a size one. Um, sometimes a 10-year-old can tolerate a size two, but absolutely, I'd say 12 or older, they should be able to use a size two um, film. Now, it depends, of course, on the child, if they have a small mouth, a big mouth, but always try to use 
bigger, you know, uh, film, if that makes sense. Um, but if the patient just simply can't tolerate it, then move to a size smaller and then try that. Because keep in mind that with a smaller film, you may have to take more x-rays to see the teeth, right? So you don't necessarily want that. And for a child, a Panorex is awesome. If you can't take the x-rays, try a Panorex because some of them just don't like anything in their mouth until they're old enough to kind of understand, right? And if their parents have been telling them, oh, well, you may have to take the x-rays today, they are large, you know, they have that in their head and they're like, oh, is this, should, do I want this in my mouth? No, I don't, you know. So a Panorex is awesome. Um, what else can I tell you? Um, if they're good, make sure to give them a toy. Um, ask them if they have any tooth questions at the end. Um, always make sure that if you give them any of uh, uh, the fluoride that they know to not eat or drink for half an hour. Um, yeah, guys, that's it. So I hope that helped. But if you guys have questions, please just comment and I would be happy to answer them for you. So the next time you see a a uh, child patient, hopefully you will think of me, yay, and have fun because some children are awesome, some are not so awesome, and some will make you exhausted by the end, okay? So good luck, have fun, and I will see you guys all in the next video.